Hello and welcome once again everyone. Today I'm going to take a look at the brand new Tier 7 French Destroyer Vogela. I've been quite impressed with the French DD line so far. Having played both the Tier 5s, the Jaguar and the Sirocco, and the Tier 6 Gepar. If you missed any of them, the links can be found in the top right of the screen and I've included a link to the full French Destroyer playlist at the end of the video. The Vocala has proved to be quite challenging to play, and I've had to experiment quite a bit with builds and captain skills, just to find that right blend to match the strategy. The complete build, which might seem a bit unorthodox to some, can be found after the highlights review section. The timestamp can be seen here on screen if you wish to jump forward at any stage. For those playing for the first time, Tier 7 in World of Warships brings a lot of new challenges like radar cruisers, Tier 8 carriers and Tier 9 matchmaking just to mention a few, all of which make the life of the French destroyer captain quite demanding due to their relatively poor concealment and having no smoke screens. I've regularly found myself pushed back and being forced into playing a very defensive role, which goes very much against my nature. The downside of playing destroyers defensively is it often leads to having less impact on games, ceding ground to the enemy team, which puts your whole team on the defensive. Due to its poor concealment, Vocala suffers badly when you attempt to lead the line. However, dropping back a little behind the lead destroyer will allow you to bring Vocalin's great strength to bear. All of my best games have come by following this strategy of playing in this close support role for the other destroyers on my team. It takes a lot of discipline and good situational awareness to play in this zone between destroyers and cruisers but it enables one to be in position to take advantage of any opportunity or mistake made by the enemy team. If you've already played the Jaguar and Gate Bar, you will have realized the strength of these torpedoes with a solid 8 kilometers in range and very good speed of 68 knots. I get the first kill of the game and the first blood achievement by simply using the radio location indicator to torpedo his location. Vocala gets an extra launcher, increasing your torpedo power by 50% compared to the previous tiers, so use them whenever possible. Your early game strategy should focus primarily on staying close to your fellow destroyers, using the additional spotting they provide to reduce the risk of being detected while you close the distance on vulnerable targets to get as many torpedoes in the water as possible and limit your gunfights to fighting only when forced to or when the balance of power is strongly in your favour. It's this learning to alternate between torp boat and gunboat modes which will be key to getting the most out of Vocala and ultimately having a lot of fun in this ship. The added bonus of learning these lessons early will serve you very well as you progress further up the tech tree line as the ships become increasingly more powerful. These torps are looking right on target. Put another spread in front of that Byron. We got two solid hits. He is flooding. He gets chunked by one of my battleships at the rear. Just attempt to quickly finish him off here using AP. And we get the second kill of the game. I am detected. The closest ship now is on my left. It is that Fiji out there in smoke. He is the closest ship to me at the moment. I'm being fired upon. You saw the incoming fire alert warning there. I managed to reduce speed rapidly. And although I was struck there, I took no damage, which seems quite peculiar. PG is moving quite slowly. I still have AP loaded. I'm just going to attempt to get a quick volley off while he goes into smoke. He 
probably is behind that island already. I'm just going to angle away, just in case he's torpedoed. I have been fired at again. Quickly turn again. Incoming shells from the Exeter. The enemy Vokala is now the closest ship. He seems to be going in a right to left trajectory. Just going to put a quick spread up there. And I'm going to move in and try and close the distance on this Vokala. While having the same ships with probably the same detection range, we will spot each other at the same time. Using RPF as my guide, I already have my guns on target, and the element of surprise is on my side. It would appear he's changed direction, so I might be out of luck here. RPF is dead ahead, he's on the opposite side of that island. He's, something's open fire, yeah it's the Vogela. I pop a reload booster instantly. His engine wouldn't seem to be knocked out. I'm going to start angling away. He has managed to turn his guns. He has slowed down. He has managed to avoid one of my volleys there. He's moving quite slowly. It has thrown off my aim. Enemy Vogela has used his reload booster as well. I do manage to set him on fire. I am undetected, so I heal. I repair that fire. He manipulated his speed well there to throw off my aim and the enemy Vokala goes down and you can see just how dangerous these close range encounters with French destroyers are. The enemy Vokala played that encounter very well. Despite everything in my favour there I just barely out traded him damage wise. The importance of landing the first salvos on target in such a fight really is paramount. And radio location is an immensely powerful skill when used in situations like this. It can really help one's situational awareness considerably and is a great skill to have on the Vokala. The enemy Jaguar is spotted so I instantly open fire Vokala really does have quite slow shell speeds. You can see here how much lead is required to reliably land shells on a fast moving target, even at medium range. Okay, the enemy Jaguar goes down. Someone's fired at me again, so instantly turn away. I'm just going to keep maneuvering here and drop detection, reverting back to torp mode while moving closer to our base to provide more cover to the Z-23, who is the only ship in defensive position at the moment. The vast majority of our team has drifted out to the right side, leaving the left flank completely undefended. You would be amazed at how many times you would see this during standard battle mode. Despite having only one base to defend, Teams will attempt to hug the border where it is Im almost impossible to react to anything. I've already called this out earlier to defend the base in chat, but it has gone largely unheeded. The enemy Ismail has turned bow in towards my position after I was last spotted, making it much more difficult for me to land torps on him from this angle. I've dropped a quick cross pattern on his position he has turned slightly, and he does take one torpedo hit, but no flooding, that's quite unfortunate. The third set is already on its way. I am resisting the urge to open fire here. I don't want to be engaging Russian battleships in open water from close range. I do find myself drifting away from my intended position here, however from supporting the Z-23. It's all about harassment and delaying tactics for the moment until we get some backup, as we are outnumbered here. Instead of hunting damage, it's smarter to just remain undetected, play cautious for the moment, and to continue torping, torping, torping. My friendly Z-23 is spotted and is taking fire from the smokescreen. Enemy Mayhan is spotted, 
I'm just gonna quickly get Torps off before helping him. Drop two spreads quickly on the Ismail. Z23 is smoking up. I'm gonna instantly focus the Mayhan. Pop the reload booster. Take no chances. Try and eliminate this Mayhan as quickly as possible. Get some good solid hits and the Mayhan goes down. I'm just going to continue to fall back. Keep fire on this enemy in Nagato. I'm taking fire now from both battleships. Our Z23 has smoked up. I still have the benefit of speed boost so I can kite away at full speed. Keep this Nagato under fire. Saving your reload booster for these close range engagements really proves beneficial. And I would advise saving them for the real moments that matter. Not only can you take out enemy destroyers extremely quickly, but you also drastically reduce the amount of incoming damage by shortening the length of engagements. The enemy Ismail has taken a torpedo and is flooding. So I'm going to quickly change my focus to him in an attempt to get some fires. And I'm just going to rotate around this island. Last line of sight. I did manage to get a fire on the Ismail. Swap to the Nagato. Z23 is calling for help, so I'm just going to acknowledge that. I did manage to get a fire on the Nagato as well. Our Ohotnik is coming in now to support, so we're here with three destroyers. Ismail is still burning, his damage control is on cooldown. Managed to get a second fire on him. That will increase the pressure on him. Just going to put some tarps on the water. He does seem to be turning away. He has damage conned. Just slightly run out of position. Kill my speed quickly and try and turn away from this island. The Ismail has had its engine knocked out. Managed to get a fire on his bow section. And start working on the different areas of his ship. There's a second fire. He's got a triple fire burning now. And we get a torpedo on him as well to finish him off. And that surprisingly is our sixth kill of the game. Swap over and put start putting fire on the enemy Nagato. Managed to get a reset on him. He is slowing down. And on fire. I'm just going to keep pressure on him. I said 23 is smoking up. I'm just going to slow down here and position myself behind the smoke screen and I can use his smoke screen to fire undetected at this enemy Nagato. He has repaired that fire. Pop the reload booster to get some extra damage out on him. I could be actually shooting armor piercing here but the fact that he has damage conned okay that fire will more than likely finish him off. Oh no, I was quite mistaken. He has damaged on that fire. Looks like he's going to eat torpedoes. We do manage to get a fire. And I almost feel a little guilty taking that kill on the Z23. But that is number 7 nonetheless. We've managed to score 95,000 in damage, crack an achievement, and I'm going to pay this Z39 a compliment. He has played a very solid game there in defending the capture point. You should always recognize players when they play well and let them know, give them a compliment. It doesn't cost you anything. So what's the final verdict on the Vogelin? 
It's been the most challenging French destroyer to play so far, but when you get a game against similar tiers, and hopefully with the changes coming in the next update to the matchmaking, you should get a lot more actual tier 7 games. The Vulcana can be extremely efficient when played in this DD close support role. It looks like the enemy carrier has finally taken notice and we get to have a little look at the shortcomings of the AA on the Vokala. It really is quite weak. I'm using the sector reinforcement to try and optimize my AA. Even a tier 6 carrier is simply able to smash right through with rockets and deal huge amounts of damage. There will be changes in the next update to the AA reinforcement. Let's hope it can provide some benefits. This game ended soon afterwards without further incident of note. Both remaining ships were taken out before I could get in range. And it's World of War ships, not sailing ships. No one wants to see me sailing around with nothing happening. A word of warning, don't expect every game to be like this. This one just worked out particularly well, playing a designated role and strategy that really suits this ship well in general. Before going to the ship build, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I've added a new Discord server, so come on over and say hello. And now onto the build. When composing these ship builds, I always make a point of recommending premium consumables. Not only will you get additional charges of reload booster and speed boost, they also have reduced cooldown times that will greatly increase your survivability and effectiveness in combat. Vogela gets four ship upgrades, starting off with Main Armaments Mod 1, Damage Control Mod 1, Aiming Systems Mod 1, and lastly, Propulsion Mod 2. On to the Captain skills. Being middle tier, it's likely you will have accumulated enough experience to have a competently trained captain at this point. But if not, I highly suggest going for Incoming Fire Alert, Last Stand, Survivability Expert, and then Concealment Expert for your first 10 points. There are quite a few valid options for your final 9 points, which you can train in your own order of preference, but I've found to be a very strong balance will include Expert Marksman, Basic Firing Training, and finally Radio Location. Okay, so let's look at what this build will mean for the ship's final stats. For survivability, Focala gets 20,550 hit points. Main artillery will consist of five single-mounted 139mm turrets with 13 kilometers in range. Equally arranged two four, one centrally and two aft with a reload speed of 4.5 seconds. Focala gets three X3 torpedo launchers, one on each side and a third centrally mounted for use on either port or starboard sides, with 8 kilometers in range and a speed of 68 knots and a reload time of 90 seconds. Vogelin gets an AA defense rating of 10, which again is really quite poor for tier 7, so beware, enemy aircraft will pose a real threat. For maneuverability, Vogelin gets a max base speed of 36 knots, a turning circle of 670 meters and a rudder shift time of 4 seconds. Finally, Vogela has a concealment rating of 92, meaning you will be surface detected at 6.6 kilometers and by aircraft at 3.2 kilometers. I'd like to thank you once again all for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more. Take a moment to check out some of my most recent videos and leave a comment below. 
And until the next time, keep sailing it like you stole it.